Good evening and welcome to your home church. Uh, we're going to try to get right into the service. If you haven't been with us before, uh, leave in the comments your prayer requests. And, uh, we'll give them out after a while here. And after we get done singing, before the preaching, we'll have a good prayer for you. Try G. When my way
tonight. Hope you enjoy our service tonight.
everybody to put your prayer requests in the comments. We'll get to those in just a few minutes. Remember to share the live stream so everybody can find it.
when the Lord begins to move, I believe you can touch you anywhere that you are. Uh, we had some folks last week down in Florida. That's the message I, I sent to them. Of course, I've got family down there. It's there all the time. Uh, uh, I believe that you can feel it down there when that spirit begins to move. It, it can move uh, all over the world at the same time. He's, he's a big God. He's able to, uh, able to do all things. Song that you sing with God before us. Let me sing it. Will I stood there boldly, keep my God's army, and there stood a little baby. stream that uh, uh, we'll have some upgrades we were hoping for tonight but uh, we just didn't have uh, enough bandwidth to hardly carry what we we're wanting to do I know I was talking to my brother earlier today and he said that the kind of grainy on the screen sometimes or whatever when you put it up on a bigger screen looks okay on the phone but uh, gets a little grainy but uh, we've got a different camera here we're going to use but we were just wouldn't uh, was able to uh, do the higher quality video over the bandwidth that we have, so we've ordered more bandwidth, and hopefully that works out. Pray that the, that it will. Uh, I forgot what it was. There was something else we had going on. I asked people to pray, and seemed like it worked out so good. So just pray that 
it just works out. We're going to try to put captions on the screen and different things that, that uh, will make it the Word of God be up there when we're preaching different things. And so it should make it a better experience for everybody, better better audio and video. We're trying to trying to get a little better at what we're doing. We want it to be a as good as experience as we can. So uh, we got a prayer request for for Pam. It's from Joe Stewart, and uh, uh, Pam needs prayer. I know she's had a, uh, a lump or something that she's been real worried about, and we, we, we love Pam. We want the Lord to move for her, so please remember that request uh, that the Lord will help her. Uh, the Lord can make things turn out all right. You know that. And, uh, sister June Quantz needs prayer. Remember that, dear sister. Vicki Coffee has an unspoken request. We've talked about that before these unspoken requests a lot of times are so near and dear to people's hearts uh, uh, sister uh, sister Mary's uh, granddaughter had uh, wisdom Rache. teeth removed Rache. huh Rache. Rache. Rache, okay had wisdom teeth removed and uh, she's having a hard time with it it's a lot of pain so the Lord can take that uh, Victoria Watts uh, needs prayer for inflammation, and she sent me a couple of messages throughout the week. Uh, Victoria really needs the help of the Lord. Uh, uh, she's having problems with RA, and, and they're putting her on different medications, but God's better than medication. And uh, I know that my daughter, uh, uh, Victoria, my daughter, that what she went through was was like almost like a crippling arthritis. She got down in, in the bed, but you know the Lord really moved for her. And I know what He does for one, He'll do for another. Mm -hmm. We just got to cry out. He He has no respect to persons, and He's able to heal all things. All we got to do is believe and trust in Him, and wait on His will. Uh, Helen Heisel re requests prayer for her nephew in Ohio uh, that has cancer. So please remember that. Uh, Brittany Lewis needs prayer. Uh, Brenda Collins needs prayer, and I, I know some about this prayer request. It's very serious. Um, she got a a very bad report from a doctor here a while back that she told me about, and uh, well, it, it just it didn't even seem like a doctor should even say those types of things. But anyway, uh, we will not get into that. But pray for Sister Brenda Collins. All these prayer requests are special, but. You know, there's a lot of these things are life and death, or they're uh, like Victoria. It's it's mobility or, or shut down right at home. That's a serious thing, church. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter Madison has not been feeling well. Uh, she's uh, she had a tick bite, and they they tried to tell her she had Lyme's disease, but we're not believing that. So, uh, but that's what the doctor has said, and we're just. Uh, we're just waiting on God to move and help her. Uh, we got a good word of the Lord down at Collie down there through Sister Tomalu Hogg. And we love Sister Tomalu and confident in her highly. Old saint that's uh, uh, been in this years and years and years. My, my elder and my good friend. And I love her and I'm so appreciative of that good word that we got. And, uh, I want everybody to uh, uh, pray for Aunt Geneva. And, and Marsh, I want to pray for both of them, but uh, please pray for Aunt Geneva. She's been having some issues and uh, with her body, so pray for her that the Lord will help her and give her strength. And uh, uh, Sister Jackie Ox called me before the live stream. She called me here at home and, and talked to me for a few minutes, and she didn't know whether she'd be able to get on or not. And she always uh, asked prayer for, for Richard and Joel, her sons. and. Richard's been on here with us a lot, and we love him, and so glad that he's uh, he's been on here with us. And I guess the only time me and Richard ever prayed together is when Jackie was in the hospital, and, and uh, she was sick there, and we got down at her at her feet in the, in the hospital floor, and we prayed together. And I was I'll never forget that. I'll never forget him getting down with me and praying for his dear mother. Jackie needs prayer. She's having problems and having to have some therapy and things and she really wants to be able to continue to go to church but she's really struggling so uh, she's our eldest sister in the church just 
far as I know, I believe that to be right. And so please pray uh, for Jackie that the that the Lord will uh, give her strength, and that if He wants to work through that therapy or however He wants to do it, remember her sons. Wilma Roberts uh, has an unspoken prayer request. We love Sister Wilma, and Martha Hurley says pray for her loved ones. And you know a lot of Martha's children have been logging on with us from time to time, and we appreciate them. We're glad of, of each and every one of them. Uh, glad of Sister Martha. Help me pray, Zach. So remember all these requests. They're all very special. We didn't we didn't name our cancer patients. They're in in the in this prayer jar that we have here over and over and over. But we've got. Uh, and I, I, I always hate to name them. Thank God wrote down because uh, I guess my brain's not as good as it should be. But we know we have Sister Myra, Sister Teresa, uh, Billy Sandusky, and who am I forgetting? Yeah, Pam, uh, Pamela Bowler's uh, dad and uh, Scott Blankenship. And that's what I can think of. I'm probably leaving somebody out. But in, anyway... All of our cancer patients that's in here, we pray for over each one of these requests. God knows every one of them that's in here, and as we raise them up, it's said to let your uh, let your requests be known by prayer and supplication. So that's what we're going to do at this time. We anoint them. We ask for everybody to pray with us. We pray for these requests. Dear Heavenly Father, today as we come before you, Lord, bless each and every one, God. You're able, Lord, to do the things that we cannot do. God, you're able to move for each and every day. You can help him, Lord. You can help Sister Jackie. Glory, God bless her in Lord's name, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, to send help to Sister Brenda. Thank you. 
glad you're with us tonight for the word of the Lord. And if you want to turn in your Bibles at home to 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, there's so much in, in this that's uh, uh, really for us right here where we are right now in time. Uh, it says so much, and we're, we're so thankful that the Lord has, has provided us uh, a road map and, and uh, a, a, a scripture like this that can touch us in, in, in all aspects of our life, in all aspects of time. It's been true, and it's, it's never failed. Uh, you know, they, they went and tried to prove, uh, they tried to prove the, the, uh, the Bible wrong, and, and if you... Well, if you listen to the right folks, you'll find out that when when they win and they done research and all these things, they just found out that the Bible's right. Amen. Uh, when they go to searching for the oldest living thing, you know, they, they, they don't find nothing. Uh, all these uh, hundreds of thousands and millions of years old, like they say, but uh, they find out that, uh, uh, that one time there was a flood and then after that, is, is what they find, and that's according to the Word of God. And, uh, Ken Hovind is somebody that I, I listen to. He's a very smart man and uh, taught science, and, and he's looked up a lot of this proof. He's a, uh, if you're on the Internet, you can look him up. and He's got a lot of good sound proof uh, from, from science, you know, that, that it, it agrees when they tell the truth. So I'm glad of the Lord tonight. I'm glad of his ways. I'm glad of his word. So try to give you the opportunity to turn to 2 Peter uh, chapter 3. The Bible says here that uh, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, uh, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Uh, let me work right here just for a few minutes in this. It says, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? I, I think in the day and time that we're living in right now, everybody uh, has got their own opinions, and there's a plenty of people, uh, glory to God, that says, where is the promise? Uh, uh, that says, in the last days there would come scoffers walking after their own lust. I can tell you, we can see that going on in the news uh, people will claim a lot of things, uh, but what they're doing, they're made motivated by their own personal lust, their own personal thing that they want. Uh, glory to God. And they're, they're saying, uh, uh, you know, I've heard people say this uh, uh, that's even been around Christian folks. Uh, uh, well, I've been hearing that the Lord's coming back all my life, and he still ain't come. Uh, well, let me tell you something. He's a coming. Uh, glory to God, but he's a great and a merciful and a powerful God, and because of his mercy is the reason he hasn't come back yet. Uh, glory to God. He wants us to be saved. Uh, he wants us to have an opportunity to serve him uh, so that we don't have to go to that awful place of eternal death. Uh, there is going to be a lake of fire. There is going to be a place to go to other than heaven. This soul was created, and it is eternal. Uh, glory to God. It's going to go somewhere. Uh, glory to God. If you go to heaven, hallelujah, you'll miss that awful place. Uh, but let me tell you something. If you miss heaven, you ain't missed it all. Uh, there's another place to go to. And Lord, we don't want to go there. Hallelujah to God. But I tell you, people has lost sight uh, that Jesus is even coming back. Uh, we had a little scare there and seemed like people got stirred up with this virus and all this talk and they thought people was a dying. Uh, they got scared up. But no, oh, what's happened to us? Uh, uh, glory to God. People are just wanting to go right back to the way that they were uh, doing their own thing. Let me tell you something. Uh, this ain't just ain't going on in the world. This is going on among the saints of God. Uh, we're too comfortable with where we are. Uh, we're too comfortable. Uh, glory to God with what we're doing. Uh, we need to be about the Father's business. We need to have our heart and mind placed on Him. Uh, we need to come out with a praise in our heart wanting to do something for the Lord. He said, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. 
But listen, it said, for this they are willingly, for this they willingly are ignorant of. Now he's telling you what they're willingly ignorant of. They, they want to deny that the word of the Lord is true, but it says that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. And you read back in Genesis chapter 1, front of your Bible, glory to God. By the word of God, he spoke it into existence. Amen. The earth oh, was void and without form. Hallelujah to God. And God began to speak. Hallelujah to God. Whereby the world uh, that then was being overflowed with water perished. Uh, glory to God. We know that in the days of Noah, uh, hallelujah, still in the book of uh, Genesis, our about seventh chapter, uh, glory to God, we know that uh, God created the world and people got to where they were continually following after sin. They were, uh, glory to God, they were going about doing their own thing and forgot about God. And you know what he done? He sent a flood upon the earth in a day where there never been rain. Uh, but he had a man there that prepared a boat. And he preached to the people that there was a flood coming. Oh, but they wouldn't take heed. Amen. And only eight souls was saved. Think about that. This earth was filled. He told them, he said, go, uh, go forth. <laughs> Hallelujah. And told them to, uh, to multiply. Amen. And, and it filled, filled the earth. But oh, they, they ran after sin. <laughs> Glory to God. And it said uh, that the world that then was being overflowed with water and perished. It said, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store. Listen to what I'm saying. The same heavens and the earth. Amen. The, the earth was recreated by water. It was flooded. It said, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word of the Lord, that same word that established it in the beginning, that same word of God that let flood came, it's kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. Hallelujah to God. When uh, after the flood it came and Noah, uh, the, the, the rain began to cease, glory to God, Noah looked uh, and he saw a rainbow in the clouds. Uh, uh, glory to God. And God told him uh, uh, that that was his covenant, uh, uh, that he would no longer uh, uh, destroy the world by water. Oh, but I'm going to tell you, we can read that it's going to be fire. Uh, hallelujah to God. It said fire against the day of judgment judgment and perdition of ungodly men. It said, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Uh, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. His promise is not, uh, glory to God, gone away. He is not slack concerning his promises. Uh, glory to God, he's going to do just what he said he'd do. Uh, but he is long-suffering. Listen, uh, you wonder why the Lord ain't come back. Hallelujah, but he is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Hey Amen. If you ever say, well, I just don't know why the Lord ain't come back. I can tell you he's wanting more people to get saved. He's long-suffering towards us. Come in uh, to the to the ship of refuge, glory to God, of salvation uh, to be saved from this old terrible uh, end, and it's going to be by fire, said the tip thirst, but the day of the Lord will come. It will come as a thief in the night. Come on now. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Amen. Today it's not going to be water the next time. It's going to be fire. He's going to send a fire down. Glory to God. It's led to live. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Amen today. What, how should we be? What should we be doing? 
knowing that this world is going to pass away, that the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. When you think not, glory to God, when you're not expecting it, uh, the Lord's going to come back. When you get to the point of uh, uh, glory to God and you become one of these scoffers, uh, uh, glory to God, and you say, where is the coming of the Lord? When is he going to come? I've heard this all my life. I don't I don't even know if this is going to happen, glory to God. Let me tell you something. Uh, the Lord will come. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. And he will come as a thief in the night. And the heavens will pass away, and the elements are going to burn with a fervent heat. Uh, glory to God. Think about what the Bible's telling you. Uh, all the elements that we see around us, they're going to be burned up. Amen. This world's going to be recreated. Psalms it said that the foundation of the world stand forever. Amen. But this outer, outer world, it's going to be burned up. 11 verse said, See then that all these things shall be dissolved. You know, the things that we have hope in, the things that uh, people put hope in today, the things they look at and see, hallelujah, they're all going to be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? You know what? We've heard this uh, all of our lives. You know, the only thing uh, that you can take with you when you leave this world, whether through death or in the air or however that you leave here, uh, the only thing you can take with you is what you do for the Lord. Amen. Come on now. All the prayers that you pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. All the mercy you obtain and all the grace. Uh, Hallelujah. That'll go with you. Glory to God. Uh, but I can tell you one thing. The things that you require in this life. Uh, the whatnots that you may have sitting in your home. Uh, glory to God. The things that we have on this earth. Uh, uh, they're all going to burn up. Uh, and you're not even going to. Uh, you're not even going to take thought of the things that you have in this life if you look and you see Jesus uh, coming back in the clouds and you look over there uh, you won't look to gather up one thing upon this earth uh, you won't think of one thing that you've uh, bought and paid for uh, you won't think of nothing except getting down upon your knees and praying and saying Lord have mercy Mercy on me. The glory to God, please have mercy. But I want you to know now is the time. The glory to God to get your mercy. Now is the time to receive what God's got for you. I want you to know there's a time of coming just like it was in the days of Noah. The glory to God when he had prepared the boat and he made the call and his family got on there and there was eight souls there and all the animals have been gathered together. Uh, glory to God to repopulate the earth. Uh, and when they was there, you know what happened? Uh, God shut the door. Uh, hallelujah. Don't wait and think I'm going to see him coming. Uh, uh, glory to God and then I'm going to cry out. Uh, it's not going to work that way. When the mercy door is closed, it's going to be too late. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. What manner of people ought we to be? Hallelujah, I'm talking to those that's uh, maybe never prayed. Uh, I mean, I'm talking to those saints of God, uh, maybe that's prayed most of their life. Uh, who do we need to be in the in the days ahead? I thought a brother last night at church uh, uh, testified, and he said, whatever the Lord's give you to do, whatever gift, whatever calling, whatever the Lord's uh, uh, put you here to do, when the Lord comes back, you need to be uh, doing that. Hey, I want you to know something. I believe that. Uh, uh, whatever the Lord's give you to do, you might say, well, the Lord ain't never given me nothing to do. Uh, let me tell you something. He's got something for you to do. You need to seek it out and see what he wants you to do. To do. Amen. Amen. He's got something for everybody to do. Hallelujah. I feel something, church. Hallelujah. When I was talking about Jesus coming back. Oh, glory to God. You know what? If we see him coming, we won't look to the to the old car that we've been working on. We won't look uh, to the houses that we've built. Uh, we, won't, we won't look at the fine clothing that we've acquired. Oh, glory to God, but the tears are running down our face. Oh, and I can tell you, if we're not ready, oh, if we're not ready, our heart, your heart knows right then, but it'll be revealed. Oh, glory to God, if you see him coming back, uh, there'll be a fear that'll get on you. Uh, the Bible teaches us that they'll run. Uh, hallelujah, they'll try to hide. People will hide 
of a day. Ain't no hiding place from God. Hallelujah. He knows where we are. He knows every hair upon our head is numbered. He knows our hearts. He knows the intents of our heart. But glory to God, I tell you what, it's time to get so serious and really do something for the Lord and do our best. I'm telling you right now, we've got mercy. But it may not be that far out that that mercy door can be closed. Oh, God, I'm telling you, in the days of Noah, it was closed. And it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Lord be. Oh, glory to God, I'm telling you, this mercy door is going to be closed after a while. Don't wait too late. Uh, think, consider what kind of person you need to be. I know that there's a lot of people teaching out there, and you can turn this live stream off and go somewhere else and find a message that will soothe your conscience to tell you to say Jesus and everything's all right. Uh, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you to say Jesus. Uh, I'm going to tell you to call upon his name. That's the only way to be uh, made completely holy. Uh, glory to God. He's the only one that can take away your sins. He's the only one that can wash you white as snow. Uh, but I can also tell you that Matthew chapter 7, he said, Not everyone that saith the Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, uh, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Uh, glory to God. Today we've got something that we need to do. Uh, we've got a way to walk. We've got a way to talk. What kind of people should we be, the Bible says here? Uh, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and in godliness? Amen today. I know you might make a misstep, uh, uh, but the Lord knows your heart if you're struggling to be. Uh, glory to God. Walk upright and do your best. <laughs> The Lord will honor his people. The glory to God, if you're doing your best for the Lord, I tell you what, he'll be found with you. Amen. He's done a lot for me, and I'm a failure many times. Hallelujah. Many times. But you know what? The Lord is so merciful, and he's so wonderful. Glory to God. I'm not a person that believes uh, that, that we, we are out here sinning every day. I know people say that. I tell you what, we can walk and we can treat people good and be careful. We can we can uh, watch our mouths and try to uh, do the best that we can. And I tell you what, the Lord will help us. If we'll pray and depend on the power of God, he'll give us the strength, hallelujah, to live uh, a godly life, just like the Bible's teaching us right here. 12th verse, looking for, the, for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. Amen. Or are you doing that? Are we, what, let me back up. It said, seeing then that all these things are resolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And there's a comma there. It goes on. It says, looking. We need to be looking for and hastening unto uh, the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens be, all fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Amen. I'm telling you today uh, that we need to be looking forward to that. He's coming back after those that love his appearing. Uh, glory to God. If you're not loving his appearing, I tell you what, I don't feel at home in this old world. Uh, glory to God. This world ain't my friend. Hallelujah. There ain't nothing but trouble here. You can turn on the news. See how that it is. Glory to God. Uh, this world ain't nobody's friend. Uh, uh, but I can tell you I've got a friend in Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. And I do love his appearing. Uh, glory to God. I want to be uh, uh, one that can raise my hands and say, uh, Come even so, Lord Jesus. Uh, amen. Come right now. Uh, hallelujah. Be able to cry out to him uh, as that lightning shoots across the sky. 13th verse said, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Ain't that going to be a good place? You know what? People's complaining about the police and different things now and, and talking about wanting to do with them, do away with them. You know what? If, if everybody was righteous, <laughs> we wouldn't need no police. Everybody treat everybody good. Amen. There wouldn't be no thieves. Amen. There wouldn't be no uh, hard sayings or nothing like that. But glory to God, that's going to be a good place to dwell in. Hallelujah. That new heaven and new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. 14th verse. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace. Hallelujah. God. Without spot. 
and blameless. Well, we got something to measure up to, don't we? You might say, well, I just don't think I can do that. I can tell you what you can't do. If you'll struggle and do what you can do, uh, Jesus is able to do the rest. Amen. He is. Uh, glory to God. If your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. Amen. If you will pull with all that you have. Amen. I'm talking about a God, uh, hallelujah, that we can read about in Colossians chapter 1. Uh, a God that's able to present us to the Father. A uh, holy, uh, glory to God, blameless. Hallelujah. Unreprovable in the sight of God. Amen. We may look at one another. And by this old human flesh, we may judge and uh, glory to God. But I'm telling you, God has a son named Jesus. And he's able to save us and to present us in a way that the Bible said so. But I can tell you, he don't do that. We got something to do in this. Amen. We have to do our best for him. Hallelujah. Without spot and blameless. Listen, 15th verse. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Ain't that wonderful? Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood. We know people struggle with that sometimes, but if we pray, we can get understanding, which they that are unlearned and unstable risk, and they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You know what? It's able to twist this word uh, to your own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before. We know what the, what the Lord did in the days of old. Beware lest ye also, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But instead of doing this, this is what he says, instead of uh, falling from your own steadfastness, in the 18th verse it says, but grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God, 16th, that 15th verse. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. I tell you what, he's, uh, he's long suffering towards us. Uh, that more people get saved. It's not his will that any would perish. Uh, glory to God, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, the Lord's not con uh, slack concerning his promise. Uh, glory to God today. He's not give up uh, on coming back. Uh, that's not a promise that's not going to be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled. It's going to overtake people. They're not going to see it coming. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, you've got an opportunity to prepare for that day right now. Amen. Don't wait and think... Uh, as somebody gets the song ready, whoever feels like it, uh, if you'll think uh, about him coming back in the sky right now. Hallelujah, how I felt that a while ago when I began to talk about those things. Oh, if you saw him coming back, you wouldn't be worried about getting your pets. You wouldn't be worried about getting your, your money. You wouldn't worry about picking up your wallet. But I can tell you what you'd be thinking about. You'd be thinking about making sure your heart was right with God. The Bible started out here. It said that he was stirring up their pure minds by way of remembrance. Oh, Lord, most of us have had Christian homes that we've been brought up in. Mothers and fathers that's taught us uh, how to live and and, and how to do right and be honest and to uh, walk upright. Amen. We can do these things. The Lord is able to secure us. Amen. He is able to do that if we'll work with Him. John 15, I know that's probably one of my favorite scriptures. You'll hear me quote it over and over. Oh, it said that, uh, that He was the vine and we were the branches. Amen. But if we, if we would bear fruit, amen, that's you can bring forth that fruit, uh, the things that he gives you. He gives us love, joy, and peace. Amen. He gives us uh, uh, things to do and say, but when we bring, start bringing forth fruit for him, he said he purges. We bring forth more fruit. Ain't that wonderful today to know that we've got a God that will help us 
Amen. Did we get any more prayer requests during the, the preaching? Uh, I'll give these in real quick, and we're going to pray as they get ready to sing. We appreciate you being with us tonight. Uh, Sister June Limble requests prayer for her cousin who had uh, uh, had surgery today. Uh, and for Misty and her grandchildren, and for herself as well. Uh, uh, Brother Jared Taylor, his papaw needs uh, needs prayer. So pray for him. Andy Ayers uh, is requesting prayer uh, for Margaret, his wife, uh, says vertigo. So that, that can be a really bad thing. Uh, please, please remember that. And Judy Blanton needs prayer tonight. So as we uh, get ready to pray, all you prayer warriors out there that we had on here, logging on to here, and even if you list, uh, listen to it later, you know it doesn't make any difference whether you're on here live praying with all of us. Your prayer will go up. Uh, your prayer will go up just the same uh, after you're watching a replay or whatever. Amen. So remember those requests and that the Lord will bless them. And as, as they begin to sing, if you don't know the Lord, I tell you what, you've got an opportunity to be saved. I'm telling you, Jesus is going to come back. Uh, it ain't no fairy tale. It's real. Amen. It's real. He destroyed the water, the world with water uh, once before, and he's going to do it again, but it's going to be fire this next time. Amen. And then when he just when he comes and destroys it, uh, it'll be too late. When things begin to happen, we need to get ourselves right with God right now. If you don't know anything about the Lord, all you have to do is begin to call upon his name. I was raised in a Christian home, but when I knelt down the first time, all I could do was cry. I really didn't know how to pray. And I just began to ask the Lord to forgive me and begin to talk to him as a Savior and as a friend. He reached down his hand. He put love in my heart. He touched me, gave me compassion, and helped me so much. The Lord is good today. He is wonderful. He's long-suffering. His mercy is so great. He paid, paid a great price on the cross at Calvary. Uh, he took a, a, a scourging and a beating and, uh, and mocking and all these things and then had, had them nails drove and he bled and died for me and for you. He died for everybody. There's nobody out there he didn't die for. And you have to make a choice to serve him. As, as we pray, if you're not saved, you kneel down wherever you are. If you're not able to kneel down, bow your head. Humble yourself before God and ask Him to come into your life and begin to lead and guide you. I'm telling you, God is a God that's able to save. In the present time that we're in, uh, we still have hope. We still have mercy. But don't play around with God. That time is going to get away after a while. It'll catch you unaware just like a thief in the night. Let's everybody pray. Dear Heavenly Father today, God, we praise you and we honor you today for your goodness. For your great mercies, Lord, for your help and your strength. God, we pray your blessings upon each request. God, I ask you that you bless each and every one of the Lord that you live. Uh, those tests for me. Thank you, Lord. You're able to do that. I know that you can. In the souls of the Lord that's lost, to you, God. I beg you, God, today. In your spirit, Lord, touch their hearts and minds, Lord. Oh, help them, Lord, to turn to you and cry out to your name. 
how the Lord's going to come back. We can make it. Amen. I know we can make it. That's something on my mind. You know what I'm going to go through, no matter no matter what, uh, what the devil's got in store for us, I know that we can make it by the help of the Lord. Well, now the preacher talking about this. that my wife's giving me here. But yeah, we'll, we're going to try to get some captions on there and hopefully all that comes uh, uh, by the help of the Lord. Y'all be praying for that. And, uh, we got a, one. The first announcement is uh, we had a birthday, <laughs> <laughs> the 22nd, and uh, Miss, Miss Madison, baby girl, <laughs> turned
turned 19. And so we'll try to sing her uh, happy birthday. And uh, we also uh, want to announce that uh, Zach and Sarah got engaged. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're all glad Zach quit dragging his feet. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to sing happy birthday. You want to play it or you want me to? So let's sing happy birthday to Madison. Happy birthday. next Thursday night and you know spread the word around I always share the uh, streams like I said next week we're hoping to have captions on there and I won't have to keep repeating myself I don't never know when somebody moves on so we'll have a banner at the bottom telling everybody what to do and that'll make things go a lot smoother I won't have to talk about these things and we're trying to do better all that we can and just pray for us and I mean sincerely pray that all this works out we'll be uh, right now, the, the camera, the phone gives a mirrored image of what we're doing, makes us look left-handed and all kinds of things. But uh, next week, if you pay attention, you'll see the difference. You, we won't no longer will be using a regular camera. Uh, things will be a little bit better. And we're, we're hoping a clear image, and, and uh, even though I dread that, but uh, anyway, we're glad you're here with us. I pray that we was a blessing to you in song or word or if just there was something that we said. Did anybody have a testimony I didn't even ask? I can say something okay. really quick. But I, I just wanted to say really quick. I did. I was thinking this week about um, when I was in high school and, you know, down through college and different things like that. You meet new people and uh, usually one of the first things that uh, people ask you is, well, what kind of music do you listen to? And uh, for me growing up, you know, we didn't listen to like a whole lot of rock or anything. So... Um, it was always kind of a weird question, and I didn't really know what to say. I just said, I like all music. You know, I like music in general. And, uh, but, you know, I was thinking back to here recently, and um, back, you know, even just a couple of years ago, most of the time I don't even ride down the road with a radio on or anything like that. I'll, you know, maybe just hum something to myself or, you know, just spend time alone in the car. I don't really listen to a whole lot of the other kind of music that's out there. And, uh, but... I was thinking about, you know, there's something else to our music that makes it special. It's because the Lord's involved and it's for God. Amen. Uh, Amen. I think really, you know, that's why music was even a, a thing. That's right. why it came about. Amen. And uh, so I'm just thankful, you know, of the Lord kind of keeps his hand on me. Um, and I'm thankful for the music that we get to listen to, you know, and the words behind it and what it means. Um, just every, every song is, it can be a blessing. It can touch your heart. It can motivate, and I'm just so thankful to the Lord. just want to get out of the way. Becca, you feel like saying anything about it? Yeah, come on. We got Becca with us again tonight. I'm glad she's here. I'm just not thinking about things. That's all right. Um, I was just thinking earlier how you were talking about how, um, like, if we do fail, you know, we do have an advocate with the Lord. Amen. Like Amen. And I was thinking about how I am thankful for the Lord's mercies and all the mercies He's had on me and my family. Yes. And I think about how thankful I am that the Lord never asks more of us than we can do. He just right. asks for our best and our whole heart. That's all He wants from us. He doesn't want more than you can give. Right. And I'm just thankful that He doesn't expect anything more of us than He knows that we can give. That's right. Amen. <laughs> wonderful testimony. I love that. Ain't that wonderful to know He don't expect somebody else's best out of us. He just expects us to do what we can do. That's a wonderful testimony. Somebody else? I had, uh, I really hadn't planned on singing a song tonight, but I thought during that speech and 
I just started talking to the Lord about how I just wanted to go home. I'm so tired of being sick, and I know what I've I've went through isn't the worst thing that could ever happen to someone. There's much worse that could happen. And I'm thankful that he healed me of being sick. But it just seems like every time I turn around, something's happening to me. And I thought when we were at college this weekend, maybe someone said to me, it seems like the devil's just trying to kill you, and it really seems that way. But I thought, you know, every time I just hold on, that the Lord always works it out for me. And I know what he does for me, he'll do for other people. So I just want to encourage anybody who's been sick for, for a while or even just for a short time that feels like they just they just can't do it anymore. I know if you just hold on, just keep holding on to his promises and to his words, that he's faithful to those and that one day if we'll hold on long enough, we'll get to make it into into heaven. I just wanted to encourage anybody out there. Amen. You always respect a person. Sometimes you may have to go through things just to get a testimony like that. Testimony for testimony. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. I'm just thankful to be here and for all that the Lord's done for me and um, for all the promises that he's made us um, throughout his word and then those individual promises that he makes each and every one of us, and I'm thankful for those. Amen. We're sure thankful she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> amen. <laughs> yeah, you should have said amen. If there's anybody should have said amen, it was you. So we're glad that, that you've uh, been here in our little front room. Uh, Zach ran into somebody, and they'd been watching on our live stream, and they really didn't know us, and just didn't understand. They said, well, you all got a really small church. <laughs> and this is the front room <laughs> front room of our house. And you gave up the, the living room and made it your home church. And, uh, the whole premise of that is this can be your church at home. And we never want to take away. We need to gather out if we're able. But this is for those that, you know, sometimes we feel down and we're not able to get out. You can have a place where you can come worship and Hopefully we say a testimony. I, I thought the testimonies were wonderful tonight. I'm so thankful for everyone. Uh, maybe they should have testified and I wouldn't have had to preach. Maybe. But I, I'm just glad, Lord. We're glad you're here. Keep praying for us. Pray things work out that uh, uh, you know we'll have better audio and video uh, uh, next week and some things to make it a little better. So we love you. Uh, may God bless you is our prayer. And good night. <laughs>